Yeah, so just to reiterate, so Steinbeck is not using the term pilgrim progress to kind of emphasize the, the spiritual journey of the Jodes and of those who are migrating to California, but rather he's stressing the idea that the, the actual action of the pilgrim, the, abil the, the ability from moving from X to Y and what moving from X to Y entails, what does that entail psychologically? What does that entail emotionally? What does that entail physically? What does that entail ecologically? What does that entail familially? So that when, when the Jodes are moving across this vast country, um, put into context, ladies and gentlemen, that People didn't move around a lot um, during this time. W where you were born is usually where you stayed. And so for the Jodes and others like the Jodes to move, you know, 1,600 miles away from a place that not only they, but their previous generations have been in, to, to make that move is, is not only is it highly unusual, but it is very um, it is very mentally challenging uh, to the individual and to the family. So nowadays we don't think of anything of moving. You know, I moved from from Miami to Connecticut, and it was like, okay, I'm moving. Let's go. You know, I, I got married. Let's get let's get this going, right? But in the 1930s, um, the Jodes and, and those of, 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 their, of his elk didn't move because, oh, I just want to move to California and eat some oranges and grapes. But they moved because they financially, um, and just for their survival, they had to leave, right? Uh, they had to leave everything away. And so I, I just wanted to, to make sure that you understood that Yes, he uses the word pilgrim, but not in a sense of the spiritual journey. And I think I, I may be misquoting someone, but their their journey is not religious at all, but it's much more of existential journey. In other words, I need to make this journey in order to exist, right? I need to make this journey in order to make sure that my family and myself are here and, and we're here to stay um, because if we don't leave Oklahoma, if we don't leave the place that we have always known as home, we will be buried here by the dust. We will be buried here by the abject poverty. We will be buried here by the lack of resources. So the same place, so the same site that provides um, financial, uh, physical coverage and space is the same place that if you don't leave, will kill you. So that's why I say it's an existential journey. Existential meaning uh, that you exist. Uh, it's a essential journey to ensure that your life and the life of those that you love are are um, are secured. So, hence, in chapter uh, chapter nine, the, the, the idea of the of the of the, um, of the pilgrim progress. That's what I meant by that. Um, and I know that was a bit of extensive. Re uh, response, but I think it was just important that you understood the, the importance of that. And some of you um, mentioned that, but I didn't. I, I, I just want to provide you more development for that analysis. Um, so any questions about that? I think Steinbeck was like, he described, like what he described. Is this, this is, yeah, this is Jude. Okay, sorry, go ahead, sorry. All right, so I think a better word for what they did would be like a refugee. Like, I, th I think their situation is closer to like a war refugee. Like, 
like you said, they had to move because of economical reasons. And like, if they didn't move, they would have died. So a pilgrim is like, in like, a, it's, a, it's a historical fact that like they moved on their own because they didn't like their situation. But the refugees, it was almost like they had to move or else they would die. <laughs> I agree. Who's, who's agreeing? Himani. Okay, Himani, can you tell, can you tell all of us why you agree with uh, Jude? Because he said the right thing. Like, normally pilgrims move for like, um, because they kind of chose to, whereas he's right where refugees normally move because of economic reasons. So it's kind of like two different situations, which gives them like a different label. Right, right. Nicely said, Himani and Jude. But let's think about that. So when we think of the word refugee, like my parents were refugees, uh, some other parents were refugees. We think of you know refugees as someone coming from another country into a new country. But here we have people who are American born and they are they have these senses as as um como se llama, as Jude and Himani have has said clearly that they become American refugees. Imagine Americans becoming refugees of their own country. I mean, what a way to kind of wrap around this idea that environmentally, socially, financially, you have to leave because the economics, the landscape, the, the environment, the government, cannot sustain you where you are because it is impossible because your life is going to change dramatically. And like, I just find it so, so thank you um, Jude and Humani for that. I think it's so uh, amazing that we're reading the Grapes of Wrath in, in, in this time period at this moment because we are experiencing some things here. Um, so let me just go to the board for a quick second and then um, we're gonna get into something. So uh, let's see if I can find my marker. Okay, here we go. Can, uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you see that? Yes? No? Yes? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So we have, we have um, the Joes. So we have the Joes uh, traveling, right? Can you see that? Do you want me to make it bigger? That's good. It looks bad. Can you make it a little bigger? Sure. Do you see that, the Joes? Mr. Chilecki, the words are backwards. Oh, for me, it's inverted. Right, I mean, but... It's the, but yeah, we, we, we'll try to understand. Okay, so just think of it as the Joes, right? And so, so that, that's your narrative part, right? That's the narrative part. So then we have... Uh, Let's call them the tenants. That's what that's what uh, that's what Steinbeck calls them, and those are the intercalary chapters, right? So we have the Joes going on a journey. You have the tenants going on a journey. However, as I was doing some reflection on on this novel, there's a third. Uh, category of, of people on a journey. Can someone tell me who that third group of people are and why they are the third group of people?
Can you repeat the question? Yes. So we have, so far we have two groups of people moving in this novel. We have the Joes who are moving, right? And we get that from chapters two, four, six, you know, the even numbers. And then we have this interclary where we have like the social commentary of people, um, not only moving, but people who are, who provide us like context to the novel. Um, so those people are moving or in the middle of the moving. But I think there's a third group of people who are also moving. And I use the word moving very abstractly as well. So the Joes are moving, the tenants, you know, the people's uh, chapter, as I called them last time. But who else is moving? Mr. Chalaki, is it the reader? I, I can't hear the person that's talking. So let me just put the speaker louder. Voila. Who, who's talking? Gemma. Oh, hey, Gemma. Go ahead. Is it like the reader? Beautiful. Tell me why. Um, because like they're going through the journey in the same way since it's like a storytelling book you like get involved and you are like not living through what they're going through but because it's such a descriptive book you like realize what they're going through uh, nicely said Gemma thank you so much so the joke so here we go so sorry for the the position I'm in but it's the only way I can show you so the jokes are moving the tenants, the people who are in the in the interclary chapters, they're moving. And we are moving along with them. So we have like this 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 trio, if you will. This we have this trio of people who are moving. And so as the Joes, as the tenants and the other Americans, uh, that as they're going through, as they're crossing or traversing, as someone wrote very beautifully in their in their um, Como se llama in their uh, responses, as these two groups are traversing the Southwest United States, we too are traversing um, the landscape as well. But we're not only traversing the physical landscape, we are also traversing the mental, emotional landscapes that we have um, as a way to kind of understand of how do we get through this? How do we as a people, how do we do this as a family? How do we do this as a person get through the, the, the travesty or, or this tragic moment? Um, and I think it's kind of like, uh, well, I don't believe in coincidences, but I think it's remarkable that we're reading this novel about testing the human will, testing our human perseverance, testing our human innovation, testing our human creativity, testing our human empathy. It, we're, we're just being tested and tested and tested and tested. And it's going to tell us what we're made out of, right? The, this novel is really t telling us it doesn't matter what race, what, what, what poverty, what gender you have. If you have the will and the determination to make it, you will. Will it be hard? Yes. Will it be difficult? Yes. Will you have blocks? Yes. Are there be are there gonna be people who are going to try to limit your success? Absolutely. But those are just conditions. They are, they cannot determine. They are only conditions to making it happen, right? So in other words. Yes, you're gonna have all these people come into your face, and you're gonna have all these people um, uh, interfering into your into your goals. But ultimately, it is you and only you that can determine the outcome of your uh, objective of your goals. Does that make sense? No. Kind of. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that that's why I get so like um, uh, impassioned about this because, you know, we we all have been at times 
a Tom Joad, not that we've committed manslaughter, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying we, 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 sometimes we haven't been the best when we could have been the best. And what I think the novel is trying to teach us is that we are all, even if we are, we are, um, how would I say this? Even though we may commit some transgressions, right, in our lives, um, but we're also able to have redemption. Um, we can redeem those those uh, transgressions we've committed by committing acts of of humility, uh, acts of forgiveness, right, and acts of redemption. We we, we redeem ourselves by by being kind and compassionate. To each other, and I think the 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 Jodes are we're we're almost like we are almost like um, como se llama? It's almost as we're we're like as I mentioned here, like the Jodes, uh, the the tenants, and us. Like we're almost like as if we're on that sedan, we're on that truck with them, right? And we're riding with them, and we're witnessing, we're observing how the landscapes are changing. We're, we're observing how the people are engaging with us and how they're discriminating against us and how they're accepting us. You're seeing moments of kindness, kindness. you're seeing moments of meanness and, and we're observing that and we're saying, that can be me, right? I can be the one that can be the mean, the mean person or the uh, uh, unkind person or I can be the person that's empathetic. And so the big thematic question here is, you have a choice to be either kind or mean. You have the choice to be helpful or not helpful. You have the choice to support or not support, right? You have, you always have that decision. And I think that that's why after almost, is it 1939, after 80 plus years of, of this book being published, that's why it's so meaningful. Um, you, you know, we always have choices and, and, and we always have choices ahead of us and we always have choices that can help us um, make us better uh, into not only better human beings, but just better versions of, of ourselves, okay? Um, so with that being said, um, cause we only have 25 minutes left and there's an assignment. No, no, I'm not saying that there's something I want you to do as a group, but if you don't mind, um, I have Amazon prime and, um, I want to show you like the first few minutes of this, um, film by, um, uh, Ken Burns. Uh, and he wrote, he did this, I mean, I don't know doctor, not the doctor. Well, might as well call him Doctor. He's just really, really an amazing guy. Dr. Lott, Mr. Lawton, um, there's this film called The Dust Bowl by Ken Burns. And he did the film in 2012, I think. Um, and he does this beautiful uh, film about what it meant or what it felt to be uh, in the Dust Bowl in the 30s. So uh, let me know if you're able to see my screen. Um, if not, um, tell me it ain't happening, but if it is happening, just say yes. Uh, cause if, if you're watching, if you're able to see it, then everybody's able to see it. So, uh, I hope that this works. Uh, so Amazon, uh, let me put my speakers on. So you may want to put your speakers on, um, and let me know if you're able to see it. Are you able to see what that says right now? Oops. That uh, can you read? Can you read where it says Ken Burns? Stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah, I can read it. Yeah, I can read it. Thank you. Okay, so let me let me play it for you. At least the first few minutes. It's really pixelated, like. Right there. It, 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 I'll fix that. Hold on. Matter of fact, just share that Amazon Prime. Support new worlds and ideas. Support your PBS station.
Let me tell you how it was. I don't care who describes that to you. Nobody can tell it any worse than what it was. And no one exaggerates that. There is no way for it to be exaggerated. It was that bad. It was just unbelievable. It would blister your face. It would put your eyes out. Well, I, I guess I can't describe it. It was just, it was just constant, just that steady blow of dirt. As far as you can see, there was a dust storm coming right towards you. This giant wall just coming towards you. And uh, you still had the feeling, uh, whether you would admit it, that something was going to run over you and just crush you. It was almost surreal, the dust. There's nowhere you can run. You can try to get out of it, but it's as if it follows you, follows you, follows you. You can't escape it. Looking back on it, I think it carried with it a, a feeling of, uh, I don't know the word exactly, of, well, being unreal, but almost being um, evil. It was a decade-long natural catastrophe of biblical proportions, when the skies refused their rains, when plagues of grasshoppers and swarms of rabbits descended on parched fields when bewildered families huddled in darkened rooms while angry winds shook their homes, pillars of dust choked out the midday sun, and the land itself, the soil they had depended upon for their survival and counted on for their prosperity, turned against them with a lethal vengeance. It was the worst man-made ecological disaster in American history and the irresistible promise of easy money and the heedless actions of thousands of farmers encouraged by their government resulted in a collective tragedy that nearly swept away the breadbasket of the nation. It's a classic tale of human beings pushing too hard against nature and nature pushing back. And that's an American bubble story too, like stocks and like real estate. We think that everything that goes up will not come down that we can defy gravity. And that's what we did here. The Dust Bowl belongs on the list of the top three, four, five environmental catastrophes in world history. But those catastrophes took place over hundreds and even thousands of years of deforestation. We've created a world-class environmental disaster in a matter of 40 or 50 years. It was an epic of human pain and suffering when normally self-reliant fathers found themselves unable to provide for their families, when even the most vigilant mothers were unable to stop the dirt that invaded their houses from killing their children, when thousands of desperate Americans were torn from their homes and forced on the road in an exodus unlike anything the United States has ever seen. But it is also the story of heroic perseverance, of a resilient people who somehow managed to endure one unimaginable hardship after another, to hold on to their lives, their land, and the ones they loved. What kind of place was this where children couldn't go outside? Where the air itself could kill you? where the sky showered down this suffocating blackness that could erase the sun at midday. Who could do that? And we didn't plan this. We didn't set out and say, let's ruin the second greatest ecosystem in North America. It was a result of a whole bunch of things that are just innate to human beings. <laughs> So um, how was that? 
can, can someone respond to me um, about what you just saw and how that relates to the novel? Was that helpful to see that, uh, the documentary? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So any thoughts about the documentary specifically? Um, the documentary oh, um, just gave, gave the reader or myself a new perspective on what the Joe family was really going through and what all the other families were going through. So it's because before the documentary or a preview of the documentary, we were not sure of the environmental crisis that happened during the 30s. Correct. And with the... What? You can continue, Kurt. I think you're. Okay. Oh, I thought I was stopped. Okay. Um. So this environmental crisis was something that we never really had to experience, but with mm -hmm. the help of witnesses and the actual footage, mm -hmm. we were we were given this like new point of view. I would say on mm -hmm. a, the setting that we were given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Kurt is so annoying. Anyone else? Um, the book is like kind of a fiction perspective and like that was like actual people that lived through it and they were describing it. So it kind of like adds on to the like what's real and like what's cooperated with the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, Steinbeck did Steinbeck did a lot of research. Um as he was working on another project before uh, he started on the Grapes of Wrath, and he decided to kind of say, you know what, forget about this project. This is a lot more important. Um, because when we think of the Great Depression, we think of um, we think of what happens in Wall Street and in New York, and but we don't really think about what happened to the rest of the country, you know, what happened to as uh, um, the narrator said, the breadbasket of, of America that, you know, you would have these, like these almost like tsunamis made of dust overcoming, overwhelming. Suck my dick! What okay. happened? I don't know what that was. Um, so you have... Uh, no idea who that was. What is that? Yeah, that was kind of weird. Um, so you had these, these tsunamis of dust um, overcoming, overwhelming. There was You're... random people joining our class. But that's weird because only you have the codes. That's weird. Anyway, um, so does that make sense? You know, um, so I posted a uh, an assignment on on Google. Um, so instead of doing the responses, you'll be doing this uh, um, as groups. Um, even though some some people have asked me if we can do this individually, um, you can, but uh, I would suggest you wouldn't because it's always better to work in groups. I mean, well, you know, it depends. It depends on who's your group member, you know? Um, but hopefully that's the case. So what I want us to do is in the sheet that you have, I really want us to consider this relationship between the the narrative chapters and the uh, inner chapters or the intercalary chapters, and I want you um, to look at the middle section. Um, it's from sec it's chapters eleven through eighteen. Um, and, and and what I want you to do is look at these the, those blank spaces, and I want you to consider uh, what's the relationship. Why why did he pair? Um, these two chapters together you know what's the relationship between chapters 9 and 10 uh what's the relationship between 11 12 and 13 uh what's the relationship between 14 and 15 so like he did that purposely and, and in the the document that i shared with you i actually put uh the words that john steinbeck used to suggest to to explain why he he paired and why he structured the novel 
in the manner that he did because he received a lot of criticism uh, for for that. They were like, well, what are you doing? You know, this is a novel. You're, you're doing almost like a historical commentary. And he, he, he basically told them, duh, I did that purposely. I did that, I wanted to do that purposely because you can't tell one story without providing the stage for that story. I, I can't provide you the characters without providing you the setting and the landscape in which these characters live. And so, and I think that's what's the, so remarkable about his fiction is because he broke new ground uh, at, at the level of, he broke new fiction grounds, in other words, uh, because writers would just write, a, a, I mean, the whole, the whole piece is a fiction, but those inner chapters or those intercalary chapters provide almost like a social, historical, economical, ecological perspective of what is happening with the characters in the novel. So it, it almost provides like an, like a, like a, an extra layer or layers of texture that you can feel the dust. You can feel the, the poverty. You can feel the hunger. Uh, you can feel the, 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 the sadness um, of these people. You feel it. You, not only are you reading it, right? So you, all your senses are being provoked, right? In these uh, intercalary chapters, right? Not only are you feeling them, but you, you almost can touch them. You know, you can feel the dust covering your, your, your body and the suits and, the, and, and your furniture or, or lack thereof. Um, and I think that's why I want to show you the documentary. So what I would like for you to do in the last, next 10 minutes, and you don't have to complete the 10 minutes, have to go, you know, next time I see you, I won't see you until Tuesday. Um, let me start until Monday, sorry, my bad. Um, to, to fill this up, but try to finish this as, uh, this as, not as quickly as possible, but do this so you don't have to think about it until next class. Um, but what I want you to do is just kind of, uh, think about the relationship between the 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 Jodes and the um, and the inner chapters, the intercalary chapters, and, and what's the relationship between the two? And I wrote uh, an example of that for you, um, so you have an idea of what I'm looking for. You know, so you're not you're not completely like, oh, what does he want? Uh, I wrote a chat. I wrote something that, you know brief about uh, how to make those commentaries. Um, and what I'm thinking of also doing is on Mondays to show you some more of the of the um, the Ken Burns uh, documentary because I think it's going to be very useful for you to get to kind of get the visual. I mean, we're getting the textual, but um, I think uh, the the film will will also help you um, understand uh, this. So to kind of review of what we went through today is the, so the big push. Um, or the big idea that I really wanted us to to pursue today is to understand that there's three three uh, there's three of us that are going on this journey: the Jodes, the the tenants, or the Ola, or the other Oklahomans, um, and on um, us. We're all all of us are going through this journey, and and at the end we're going to see how. Um, are we, did we achieve this heroic journey? Did we achieve, did we become the master of two worlds at the end of this journey? Or is there still room for us to grow um, at the end of this? So uh, I hope that was made sense to all of you. Um, do I have any questions about what you're doing now or any of this that I mentioned today? No. No, okay. So um, the, the document should be available to you now. I'll stay online um, for the next eight minutes um, for as long as you need me to. Um, and, um, and that's it. So if you have any questions, um, you can ask me now or through email or whatever um, best fits you. Or you can watch, not or, uh, if you want to watch your own, uh, if you have Prime, it's free. If you have Prime, you can watch the rest of it. But there's parts of the, 
there's parts of the um, the film that I will be showing uh, to you in uh, in class. Um, so let me take attendance now, so I don't get in trouble. Oh, everybody's here, except who's not here? Okay. Uh, Sebastian. And I will, um, I'll put this lecture on, on um, what's that thing called? YouTube. So you have um, access to, like, if you want to review the, the notes, 